said, look, I want to continue the good job of Buhari. What is the good job of Buhari? Of hunger is a good job. Of poverty is a good job. Of insecurity is a good job. Of the economy falling is a good job. It's such a shameful thing. No mind up, no mind up. Where is he? No mind up. Really wicked. You know, I mean, they should let him have his band so that everybody will want mad. Maybe everybody just mad together. Abby. I don't know. Is it just me? I miss uh, with the weakest band. Uh, the ones that always give him that. And I bet you, if nobody said this football at Wahala, if I don't bring them to Abuja, and you Abuja people. You would have started learning some new, new ones, new music, and he go to dance for you. Take off his this and that. Seventy years old man. Seventy years. <laughs> Seventy years old man. But let's hope that uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, which is going to be another day, by the way. Now let's away from uh, where the wiki and uh, his own uh, boys and possibly his own, own gang, trying to fight to stay relevant and stay alive politically. His structure, he said, is being sort of uh, demolished. Fubara sacked everybody, you know, every polit I mean, sorry, every appointment uh, made by uh, Wiriwiki into his government. He sacked all of them. Uh, and as, uh, sorry, as it stands, he's trying to consolidate that, see how many loyalty he can buy. Some of them sympathy for, oh, we wanted to show Wiriwiki. People who are like uh, of APC in the state, they have also joined him. The Labour Party governorship candidate in River State has also joined him. Every one of them is trying to come together to fight one emperor, and that is Emperor Wiriwiki. I will leave it at that and go on to the next one. Because, uh, I don't know, this cracks me up. Do you, do you remember this? I built this country, I employed 13,800 workers. People employ not nobody. And nobody asks them their source of wealth. I have three factories in Lagos, Nigeria. I have two factories in Ota, built manufacturing. I have three factories in Aba, manufacturing. And I'm a thief. And people that cannot explain where their source of wealth comes from, they are not thieves. I leave everything in the hands of God. May God be the judge. Thank you very much. What shall I say unto the Lord? Yes, Lord. All I have to say. Thank you, Lord. Thank what shall I say? Thank you, Lord. We can deliver what I have to say. We can deliver. We buy. We buy. We can deliver. We can deliver. We can deliver. We can deliver. Thank you, Lord. And I think that's the song of those who are from Abia State, by the way. You've heard about Alex Oti. Well, he's the only surviving Labour Party governorship, uh, uh, you know, well, only uh, surviving Labour Party state. And he's uh, projected to be uh, a sort of a replica of what Obi could have been. I mean, how do you manage resources? And how do you direct resources towards uh, critical sectors that could in turn yield to improve the lives of the people directly? Nigeria and Nigerians generally knows that a recurrent expenditure, which includes the salaries and all of all other emoluments that doesn't add any value, is what is usually take the chunk of their budget in Nigeria. I mean, from state to federal, uh, federal. They always created all those lacunas on how to steal and all of that. So Alex Oti, uh, who, as uh, I mean, Abian says, a lot of them are saying it too. Sure you get. They said, in 24 years, eh, as much as a lot of you have uh, so much to say about the failed uh, past-present government in your different states in Nigeria, 
do not wish what happened to the people of Abia State in 24 years of this demonstration of grace to happen to you. Do never wish it on your state. They got so bad that Abia State people just exist for existing sake without expecting anything from those they elected. Even though they might be hearing billions, billions, and all of that. It was like that for 24 years that the money ended up in the pocket of uh, private people. PDP, the people destroying people. So this guy came, okay? And the first uh, baptismal of fire was his own expenses on how much money he spends to run the government house. How could he spend nearly 10 uh, billion era running the government house when everybody's like trying to, you know, so people reacted, they came back, they gave their own reasons, excuses and all of that stuff. It's back again, this time around, something different, something you wish, if they can indeed, if he can indeed do that, uh, you can begin to, like uh, Sheyima Kendeo for you, well, you can begin to possibly track uh, some level of uh, development in Abia State, something like something trackable. You can say, oh, so they are doing this, oh, it's rubbish. Oh, they are doing that, oh, very good. Like something you can really monitor. So what did he do? He presented his own budget. And in his own budget, he allocated over 80% of the budget to capital expenditure. Capital means building things, building roads, schools, renovating this or fixing that, and all of that stuff. That's what the capital is. Okay? And according to him, the lack of uh, uh, road infrastructure alone in Abia State has uh, made the state to be losing over 100 and uh, well, nearly, he said, over 200 billion, he said, over 200 billion uh, naira uh, yearly just for bad roads alone. That could be some free money that uh, investing in roads could really add to their to their own uh, cover. So then people started celebrating that, oh, 80%. Oh, wow, that's how much is he allocating for education? 20%. How much is for healthcare? 18%. Oh, that, I mean, sorry, 20%. That's glad, you know. Anyway, why am I telling you all of this? See, I am not always for negative or what have you. I prefer actions than talks. I have lived long enough, okay, with my own experience, from my own experience, that Nigerian politicians do most talking than acting or doing things, okay? However, when you look at those who are talking and you look at what they say they want to do or what they are doing, there are some remnants of a, sort of, a, you know, reliability, if you can see in them, that you can look after afterward, right? And then you can rate them on it. That's okay. Well, that's that's nonsense. It's failed. It's probably okay. Yeah, that's good. Because whatever is going to really be direct, I mean, be or have a direct impact or direct a positive uh, impact on the lives of an average person in that place is something I'm I'm glad to actually report on. But it's just that uh, the worst that you see in Nigeria, the the the, the, the criminals scattered all over the place. They are just so much, too much. That is like a searching for a needle in a haystack, trying to look for good thing that they can actually see through genuinely without the other agenda of, uh, you know. Anyway, let's hear from him. Oti himself explaining his own budget. I haven't seen the details of it, but I've seen a fraction, like fraction, fragmentation of it. Enough to say, oh, I'm gone. Where are you going to get the money from, by the way? He's presented a budget. As much as he's dedicating 80% of his budget of 2024 to capital rights, Abia State has no money for that budget. In fact, 70% of that money eh, is going to be borrowed. But when you borrow to build, when you borrow okay, to produce, it simply means you are investing it eventually your investment will pay off and you can pay your debt. And that, that you have achieved without borrowing, will still outlast or outlive even yourself as a government. I mean, you don't borrow to buy cars, borrow to buy boats, borrow to travel and all of that stuff, borrow to, you know what I mean? Things that don't really add value. So to say, but yeah, having to, I mean, planning to borrow over 300 billion naira. That is, I mean, that is uh, audacious. They will say that is ambitious. So I have something to track uh, in that next year then. Uh? So our budget today and the way it was presented shows clearly that uh, we are now determined to start afresh 
uh, rebuild our state, uh, construct roots, um, eradicate insecurity, uh, make our state conducive for uh, investments, both local and foreign, to flow into the economy. So all these require a lot of thinking, doing things differently, and um, uh, ensuring that there is a clear departure uh, from the past. So the budget we have, we have presented is a budget that speaks to all the things we intend to do with the state. Well, it appears infrastructure has a very large chunk. What can you say about that? Yes, infrastructure has about 17% of the, of the budget, but it's not the largest. Healthcare has about 20%, and um, I mean, education has about 20%, and healthcare 15%. So, what we have done with this budget uh, is to ensure that we rein in cost of governance and improve on things uh, that will improve people's welfare. Uh, so, when you are talking about education, then you're empowering the people. Uh, to be the best they can be and be available for the kind of jobs that the 21st century offers. So we are looking at every facet of education, not just infrastructure, but the curriculum and the, or the curricula and the quality of teachers and how skilled they are and training and retraining them. So um, infrastructure is also very important because we believe that if we do not build rules to give our people access and uh, to ensure that um, movement of goods and services are smooth, then we will not attract the investments that we are looking for. Um, if we do not support uh, industries to spring, spring up, particularly in ABBA, that is noted for uh, being both an industrial and commercial center, if we do not ensure that um, the environment is conducive, then the investment will not come. So uh, it's a deliberate effort that we are making, and we are sure we are getting it right. Your Excellency, I am much more interested in ABBA, and you specifically mentioned it there in the hallowed chambers. ABBA, a commercial hub. What is your vision for ABBA, drawing investors to Abia State? We always hear, made in ABBA goods. Yes, uh, you are very right. Um, I, like I reported earlier today, um, I thank the House of Assembly for speedily uh, passing the bill, uh, which we tabled before them is an executive bill, the ABA, uh, Great ABA Development uh, Agency GADA. Uh, yesterday, in fact, I, in the evening yesterday, I signed uh, the bill into law. And what that is supposed to do is in fulfillment of our campaign promises that we intend to uh, create a special zone out of ABBA. And uh, because we know the potentials, we know that uh, if we fix infrastructure in ABBA, if we, we know that if we um, ensure that the place is clean, if we provide um, power and water, uh, ABBA people hardly need any other thing from government, and they will just run. And they will also provide uh, the necessary revenue with which to develop other parts of the state. So there is virtually nothing that is not made in ABBA. It may not be the sophisticated model, it may not be as smooth as the ones coming in from China or from Japan, but they will make them. And like somebody says, you continue to fake it until you make it. Uh, so we encourage our people to continue not just in leather, which they are known for, but also fashion. Uh, most of our tailors, by the time they produce clothes, you'll be wondering where they were produced. And it's ABBA. Uh, of course, uh, light manufacturing, the micro, small, and medium-scale industries, all uh, will get a fillip with the a budget that we have just presented to the House of Assembly, and I know that it will be passed. Excellency, a recap of what you said in there and the hopes and expectations of the people of Abia State towards the implementation of the budget 2024, tagged the budget of new beginning. 
All right. So uh, the first thing is that uh, we uh, have crafted a budget that will spur business in Abia State. And we sat down over several weeks to ensure that all the building blocks were put together. Uh, it is an ambitious budget, like people will say, uh, from about 167 billion uh, to uh, 567 billion. So it's a lot of uh, much more money to spend. But then the reality is that if you factor in inflation at about 30 percent per annum, if you look at the convergence of the of the exchange rates uh, from about 750 to over 1,200 that it is today. Uh, if you look at the removal of petroleum subsidy, when you factor all those in, you will find that the difference may not be as much or may not be as pro pronounced. But we believe that this budget will spur business. We believe that it will spur businesses to create jobs, to do all they can do, uh, to um, push the potentials and the, uh, of business in Abia State. And that's what government is about. Most importantly, we also believe that it would help our people uh, in terms of supporting them with welfare, um, the salaries that have been owed for several months and years, all of them are going to be cleared and they have been provided for uh, in this budget. So this is a budget that will make a difference in the life of the average Abiyaman. And we also believe that it's a budget that will also attract uh, Abians in the diaspora and Abians who live outside Abia, that we are ready and open for business. And we hope that from next year we will start receiving them and this economy would be jump started. Thank you. And uh, from my own state, Ogun State. chief security of state. Will they arrest anybody? Anybody? What a man kill a guy? Come again, the governor. Dubious that when the governor states me, will they arrest anybody? Here you get. Somebody is directly asking all of you in the diaspora. Abians in diaspora, eh? That are watching Mayegun's diary political. And then you are also watching Alex Oti. You are from Abia. As everybody is trying to say, hey, me, Nigeria. Mm, what do you me with Nigeria? My money. Ni no, 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 no. And you begin to look at Alex Oti. And you begin to admire like, oh, one name. Mm. I think I'm going back to Abia. Really? I thought we agreed that uh, until everything is. I'm just saying. But what happened is that... Um, Nigeria is looking everywhere, begging for money. These criminals are begging everyone for money all over the world. And at the end of the day, they are giving them ridiculous conditions, ridiculous conditions for those money. Meanwhile, you see all Nigerians who are abroad. Eh? We all know that uh, nobody trusts these criminals. I don't trust them. I'm not going to give them my money. Or it was, uh, if it was like uh, starting from your charade elections, you build trust through institutions. When your institutions save the day, you build trust. Nigerians living outside Nigeria alone, they can fund, I mean, yearly, they can fund over $100 billion into Nigeria economy regularly with a trust that uh, that. Uh, Huge yearly investment in that uh, country will bring them as well enough return and huge return, prosperity, things that will actually encourage them to want to come back there. But when you have a country where criminals are shielding terrorists, people are left abandoned to their own faith, eh? to their own faith rather, while these rogues are packing every penny, every money they can find, including the one they can print and leave the country. They turn the country to a shito. They turn themselves to beggars. And a lot of us are keeping our money away, apart from paying for, oh, I'm sending school fees. I'm sending hospital bill. Oh, I'm sending house rent. 
Oh, I'm sending money for provision or oh, allowance. Nobody is making any major investment in that place anymore. And nobody will. The more your system continues to deteriorate and deteriorate, they will continue to beg for money and beg for money to further make the country worse and worse and worse. And while those who were supposed to be patriotic to Nigeria will never be patriotic to Nigeria, why should I be patriotic to a place where everything there is just to kill me? It's not possible. Do you know that? And that is why a lot of people would rather that uh, when you are ready, call us. Someone, told, someone said, the reason why the hardship that Nigerians are facing right now, or Nigerians are still going to face economically, the reason why it's going to, is, is this high, is because the diasporans don't send their money for any major investment anymore. No. Don't get me wrong, go. People still go there to build also. Oh. People still go there to buy this or do that too. Oh. But what happened is that it could have been more. It is like you are getting, for example, let's say you are getting $20 eh, from where you could actually get more than $200. Do you know the distance between $20 and $200? Eh? So you might feel like, hey, but there are people are still bringing $20 now, but you could have actually made $200 or even times $1,000 of that, $20,000. You remember that capacity, right? So the more they continue to fail, the more they continue to destroy Nigeria, the more they continue to make us stay away. Don't come, stay where you are. Don't let them kidnap you. Do you know that some people have problem with me drinking my tea like that? You don't know that. Sitting down to talk for hours, eh? We kind of uh, dehydrate you. To rehydrate yourself, you need to kind of add some. I would have been drinking water, but I'm not a water person. I'm a tea person. But somebody was like, ah, that's good now. Sit down there. Tea cup and the wristwatch. Do you understand? But if you are somebody who has uh, who actually uh, speak, do you not know that uh, I need to be filling that my system with water? Or if not, before you know it, I go down turn to with a wiki. So what I am saying to you and everybody is that can you hear me? Is that what you want, Willy? Who has a problem with me drinking my or sipping my tea? Maybe I'm even doing the class. Just saying. You know? So yeah, a lot of us would rather keep our money to ourselves or even put them somewhere else. And Nigeria is suffering for it. Some of you may not understand what that means. You don't. Since I'm not sending the money directly to you. Who you help? Who you help? Now you can see the shampoo of economy you are seeing now, right? Don't worry, you will understand even better as time goes by. Because even your thieves. Eh? Oh, that's something I wanted to see, but I've shown you that before, okay? Now this is where I'm going to um, take a short break, okay? Come back and take a... Oh, hang on. Today is Agbeke's birthday. So I'm not going to take calls tonight. Okay? So I'm going to go spend some evening and time, you know, for the rest of the night here with uh, Agbeke. And to all of you, I'm sorry, I forgot. I just want to get into my routine. Like, oh, yeah, let's continue and all that. No? So we have uh, to call it uh, a night. Okay? So uh, thank you to every one of you who uh, sort of uh, send your goodwill mes uh, messages to Agbeke today. Okay, and then uh, to those of you who also spent your evening with me so far, thank you. And to every one of you who eat my call, that take me to 90,000 subscribers, and uh, I got 10 of you, 11, 11 of you who have responded. So thank you. If you joined me in the last uh, one hour, okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Right? I don't even know that. What was that? Did you see that? <laughs> Did that just kind of pop up? I was like doing that, like, thank you, thank you. And then uh, boom, it just gave me that splash. So that's for Agbeke. So thanks to every one of you for today, okay? I will see you uh, some other time, okay? And remember, if this is your first time of watching my Egun and you kind of enjoy this, right? Just like my broadcast. Subscribe to my channel as well, all right? I'm uh, on the race to 100,000 subscribers. 
of force, we need to get to 90,000 first. And to everybody else, I mean, everyone else, like the broadcast as you're offering as you leave tonight, share it as you always do. I will see you some other time. And thank you. And good night.
ni mati se yi to ye ki won se omo ba dero o ni fi won ni ro ha ki ma yi se re oro yi ki se fe ki ma yi se re oro yi ki se fe emi ba si le le bo le ru o omo ba dero ka sha yi tu won si ta e Suraki, 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 suraki